Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. So today we are tackling a classic React question. Does your React app need Redux? Or are we just pulling out the big guns unnecessarily? I'm sure by now you have heard of Redux, that famous state management library every second developer swears by. But do you really need it? And if yes, when should you actually use it? And most importantly, what even is it? By the end of this video, you'll know exactly when Redux makes sense, when it doesn't, and how to keep your state from turning into spaghetti. All right, so why Redux was invented? So once upon a time in the dark ages of web dev, around 2015-16, React was still kind of baby React. It was amazing for building UI components, but it sucked at sharing state between components. If you had deep nesting, you were doing prop drilling like crazy. One prop to rule them all, one prop to find them. Except it actually just found bugs. So Redux came in, it centralized the state. No more prop drilling, it was predictable, scalable, and beautiful. So what has changed since then? So fast forward to now, React is grown up. Today we have got hooks like use state, we have use reducer, there are custom hooks. There is something called context API you might be aware of. Honestly, with the introduction of all these tools, we don't need heavy artillery like Redux anymore. So let's look at a super tiny example real quick. So if you have small app like a counter or theme toggler, or I, I would say small to medium app, so you would just need use state and use context to manage your state and it would be fine. But if you have bigger apps like e-commerce card or a trade app, the so managing dozens of interconnected states can really get messy real fast here without a tool like Redux. This is where Redux or at least a decent structured state manager starts making life easier. So let's see, when do you actually need Redux? So we have seen Redux is no longer the default move now, but it's still awesome if you are checking two or more of these boxes. First, you have massive complicated state across many components of the app, maybe unrelated components. Second, you need fine-grained control over how and when things update. Third, you need time travel debugging, undo, redo, replay actions. Fourth, you are syncing complex server and local states. Fifth, your team is big and you need a predictable flow for everyone to follow. So there it is. If you check any of these boxes, any two of these boxes or more, then you definitely need feeders. Otherwise, you can manage with the hooks which are available in React. So I'll give you a few real world examples real quick. So if you're creating something like Facebook Messenger, which has crazy complex states and props, so definitely you need Redux style structure there. But if you're creating a small portfolio site, no Redux is required there. Suppose you're creating a food delivery app, do you need Redux there? It depends. There are cards, orders, multi-step checkouts, maybe Redux, yes. If there is a finance or trading app you're creating, high stakes state, Yes, definitely Redux. So if you're still unsure, here's the move. Just start slow. Start with simple hooks like use state, use effect, use reducers. If things get a little messy, then you can use context API. And if you truly need fine control, predictable flows, debugging across time, then reach for Redux. And always, always use Redux toolkit. Old Redux is a pain. Toolkit is love. So you want to learn Redux the right way with real world projects and no fluff. Want to know more about Redux? So we have got it covered in our React course. It's hands-on, beginners friendly, and you'll actually build stuff using Redux Toolkit the way it's used in modern development teams. So check out the link in description and register for our webinars. Thank you.